the physical properties of organic molecules section of organic chemistry is question three in the chemistry paper, which reads, the relationship between boiling point and number of carbon atoms in straight chain molecules of aldehydes, alkanes, and primary alcohols is investigated. Curves A, B, and C are obtained. Question 3.1, define the term boiling point and the definition as given in the guideline document. It is the temperature at which the vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure. Question 3.2 reads, write down the structural formula of the functional group of the aldehydes. And aldehydes we know are defined by a carbon oxygen double bond known as the carbonyl group. And it is always on the first carbon, which means that that carbon chain only goes off in one direction and the other bond that the carbon forms is with a hydrogen. Question 3.3 says the graph shows that the boiling points increase as the number of carbon atoms increases fully explain this trend. And so what they are saying is they're saying is when there are three carbons, the boiling point is lower than when there are then four carbons, five carbons, six carbons, seven carbons and eight carbons. And that is true for all three of these different homologous series, those being the alkanes, aldehydes, and primary alcohols. So they are not asking us to compare here, to compare the different functional groups. They are asking us, why does an increase in the number of carbon atoms have an effect on the boiling point? And the reason for that is that as the carbon chain gets longer, there are going to be more sites for London forces to be formed. And so the first thing that we need to specify here is that an increase in chain length an increase in chain length means that the contact surface area increases contact surface area meaning the number of sites where london forces can exist so we say that as the chain length increases the contact surface area also increases along with it the next thing that we need to state here is that when there's a greater contact surface area, so since there is now a greater contact surface area, therefore we increase the London forces, the London dispersion forces. We are essentially increasing the London forces, which increases the intermolecular force strength. So what we're starting with here is that we're saying that because chain length increases contact surface area, that increase in contact surface area increases the strength of the intermolecular forces. And then what's important, the part that we often leave out here, is that we need to relate this to energy because this is about the relationship between the number of carbons and the boiling point. And therefore we say since the increase in intermolecular forces, we say therefore more energy is required to separate these molecules. And this is the step we often forget. So we say we draw a link between chain length and increase in intermolecular force strength. And then once we have that, we can say, therefore, more energy is required, which results in our higher boiling point. Question 3.4 asks us to identify the curve, either A, B, or C, that represents the following those being the compounds with London forces only. What's important here is now we are comparing our homologous series. And so the three homologous series that we have, we have already drawn the functional group for our aldehydes, which we can see contains a carbon oxygen double bond, which makes this molecule polar. The other functional group is going to be the functional group of the alcohols, which is a bond between a carbon and an oxygen, which is in turn bonded to a hydrogen. And that bond between oxygen and a hydro hydrogen, the hydroxyl group, makes this molecule very polar, which means that it has incredibly strong intermolecular forces. And then finally, the alkanes are very simply just carbon-carbon single bonds where we know that hydrocarbons only have London forces as their intermolecular forces. So from these three 
different homologous series, the aldehydes, alkanes, and alcohols, we can see that it is going to be the alkanes that are going to have the weakest intermolecular forces. And since the alkanes have the weakest intermolecular forces, we can then safely say that they are going to have the lowest boiling points. But the question 3.4.1 has asked which one has London forces only, and we've identified the alkanes 3.4.1. We've identified the alkanes as those because they are the weakest intermolecular forces, and we can see which one has the weakest intermolecular forces by seeing that graph C has the lowest boiling point no matter what number of carbons in the chain. So graph C clearly represents our alkanes. Question 3.4.2 asks us to identify the curve that represents the aldehydes and explain that answer. So what we've seen is that our hydroxyl group in the alcohols is going to have the strongest intermolecular forces. Strongest intermolecular forces require the most energy and therefore will have the highest boiling point. So graph A is going to represent our alcohols. Since we have already shown that graph C represents the alkanes, that leaves the middle, meaning the ones that are not the most polar like the alcohols and not the least polar like the alkanes, leaves the aldehyde as graph B. We are asked to explain our answer and it is for four marks, so a lengthy description or explanation is required. And so we need to start out by identifying the intermolecular forces. And so we say that our aldehydes have dipole-dipole intermolecular forces. As we mentioned, the carbon-oxygen double bond, this carbon-oxygen double bond over here is a polar bond and therefore it has dipole-dipole intermolecular forces. We then need to explain that these dipole-dipole intermolecular forces are stronger than the London forces in alkanes, but not as strong as the hydrogen bonding forces in the alcohols. And so what we can say is we can say, therefore, these require more energy than our alkanes and less energy than the alcohols. And so what we've done here is we've shown very clearly how it fits in between the two. And so, and then finally, because we've explained with energy, we say, therefore, it will have a higher boiling point than our alkanes and a lower boiling point than the alcohols. Question 3.5. Use the information in the graph and write down the IUPAC name of the compound with a boiling point of 373 Kelvin. And so we use our graph here and we can see that there is only one compound when we read off the graph that has a boiling point at 373 Kelvin. And that compound is as we have identified on graph B, therefore an aldehyde, and it contains four carbons. And so question 3.5 is an aldehyde that contains four carbons. Four carbons gets the prefix but, and it's an aldehyde, therefore the suffix anel. Question 3.6 asks, write down the IUPAC name of the compound containing five carbon atoms, which has the lowest vapor pressure at a given temperature. And so what we need to realize here is that vapor pressure is inversely proportional to boiling point. The reason for this is because as intermolecular force strengths increase, it makes it more difficult for a substance to be separated and therefore boil. But as those intermolecular force strengths get stronger, it means that fewer molecules are able to escape and become a vapor and therefore the vapor pressure decreases. So by asking for the substance with the lowest vapor pressure, this question is essentially asking for the substance with the highest boiling point. And the highest boiling point, as we can see from this graph, is going to be in our alcohols. And they have asked specifically for the alcohol containing five carbon atoms, which means five carbon atoms with an alcohol is going to be pentanol. 
And then we have to go back to the beginning of the question where they've specified that it must be a primary alcohol. So our pentanol is always going to be meth f prop but pent five carbons and they've specified that it is a primary alcohol which means that that hydroxyl group is going to go on the first carbon and then the question here has now asked us for the IUPAC name and so the correct IUPAC name for the substance is pentan one ol again the reason for this is because a low vapor pressure corresponds to a, a strong intermolecular force and therefore a high boiling point. When they ask for the lowest vapor pressure, they are essentially asking for the substance with the highest boiling point on this graph. This question, when marked according to the guidelines, the question 3.1, the definition as per the guideline document where the underlined words must be there in order for both marks to be given. Question 3.2, write down the structural formula of the functional group of the aldehydes. And this is the correct answer here. It is one mark. A common error is to put an R there to represent the rest of the chain. This makes it wrong. They have asked only for the functional group. They have not asked us in any way to represent the rest of the chain. And the functional group is therefore only showing the carbon, the hydrogen, and the carbonyl group with their bonds. Question 3.3 asks us to explain the trend in the graph and there are three marks required here. The first one is for drawing a link between the chain length and the contact surface area showing that when the chain length increases so does the contact surface area. The next mark is for saying since the contact surface area increases the London forces increase and therefore there are stronger intermolecular forces. And then the last mark is the common one that we miss, is that we need to relate intermolecular forces through energy to the physical property. And so the last mark is for referring to the energy required and therefore explaining the trend in boiling point. Question 3.4.1, correctly identifying graph C as the compounds with London forces only. Question 3.4.2 is a four mark question. There's one mark for correctly identifying graph B as that of the aldehydes. There's then one mark allocated for identifying the different London forces in the molecules present. So the dipole-dipole forces in the aldehydes compared with the hydrogen bonding in the alcohols and the London forces in the alkanes. Those must be compared where we say these are stronger than those. And then the third mark allocated for once again referring to the energy. Energy is very important in these questions where we relate a intermolecular force to a physical property. And so we can do that and we do that by saying since the dipole-dipole forces are stronger than London forces, more energy is required than alkanes and less energy is required than in alcohols. That is our second mark, the energy relationship. And then our final mark, is therefore explaining since more and less energy is required, this is going to have a boiling point that is exactly between that of the alcohols and the alkanes. Question 3.5, there's one mark for correctly identifying the number of carbons, butte, and one mark for the correct functional group, anel, of the aldehydes. And question 3.6, there is one mark for or well, there are two marks allocated for correctly identifying the alcohol with the lowest vapor pressure with five carbons as pentan one ol.